Is it the Sharana or Sharani? Sharana. 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 You know I mean? Because Most... it's colorful. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Please what, tell me. Uh, it, 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 as a building, it, although it's she, Sharana, Jamia, um, it has uh, many things that are uh, significant for one mosque and that uh, somehow uh, puts her or it in, a, in one place and all other mosques in other place. One of the reasons is that it's colorful because usually religious places in the Islamic world, they don't have trees or flowers or anything like that on the walls. It's either white or in some other one paint, usually white or green maybe and something like that. Uh, other thing that's very specific is this, come here. You see the ground floor? Maybe yesterday and today when we yes. were passing by, you see the ground floor. Uh, it's called like um, Bezistan uh, shops. And it is something that is for everybody. It's not for religion. It's for everybody to come buy something, sell something. It's like a marketplace, a small marketplace. And when it was rebuilt, in 1757 by Chamil Anga, and it was called Chamelia for a certain period. He wanted to be, uh, uh, th this ground floor, to be uh, this economic part where this religious part will take money from it and finance itself. But later on, during the Second World War and afterwards, uh, the local government took it and it was not a part of the Islamic community, this ground floor. Uh, although a couple of years ago, after this uh, war in the 90s in Bosnia, uh, they took it back. And now it's again a part of this Islamic community. Uh, other two floors are for religious right for prayers it's so the, this upper part is mosque this one is like a marketplace small shops and there is a, a kind of a coffee shop no alcohol in there but you need to grind your own coffee if you want to drink it like in the old times I can show you that later on first mosque in this place was in the 16th century by Ghazi Aga. It was a small uh, neighborhood mosque, like the ones that you can see, very small, not this big. And uh, that one uh, was destroyed, but the minaret left here. And people say that it may be still the original place of the minaret, now built with a brick and wall, uh, but it's on the left side. Usually in the Islamic world, mosques have their minarets on the right side. So this is a very unique mosque for it because this is the entrance. When you come from that side, this is the back side, that's the back side of the mosque. But people usually think that entrance is somewhere there because you see the minaret from the right side and they have very uh, wrong perception of it. This is where you enter it. Uh, down there we have Abdesthana, if you want to have a, take a prayer. Uh, so that's another thing that's very specific for and unique for this place. Uh, when it comes to this colorful part, it's related to the 19th century, when Suleiman Pasha Skopjak earned some money while uh, campaigning to Belgrade. He was very successful there, but he was born here in the Uskoplya Valley, and he was vizier also here in the 19th century. So uh, when one of the fires happened and destroyed Chamelia in uh, 1815, uh, so Suleiman Pasha came and in 1816 gave the money for a very big and beautiful mosque to be rebuilt. And that's how we got it.
now. From that period, it's called Suleimania. So Chamelia, Suleimania, Sharena. Colorful. And also, uh, one of the reasons, maybe, for the minaret being on this side, is this spring that flows, the water, the soil. They were not able to build it near there, near uh -huh. the soil, the water. We have a lot of springs and water in Travnik. So That's, one of makes, my that makes sense actually. Yeah. One of my colleagues, curator at the museum, he was writing something, one article about Tramnik, and he said, uh, "I wonder why Tramnik is not called a water town because because we have a lot of water, not the grass town like Tramnik. <laughs> we have a lot of water." Come here. So do you see the Arabic words? Words in Arabic. Uh, each uh, yes. this uh, these ornaments are made of flowers, trees, and uh, some symbols that represent paradise, like Jannet. And in the Islamic world, uh, houses and all kinds of buildings uh, are not allowed to have faces on the walls, on the posters, photos. In the Islamic world, um, of very religious people, they obey that. They have no photos of their children, of themselves, no one in their houses. And that's why here you have a lot of colors, you have different ornaments, different symbols, different words, no faces. It's not allowed. So you can't find it anywhere in the world, in any mosque, or anything that's related to Islam. And uh, the short words in Arabic are the names of Muhammad Salam, Ashabs, the closest companions, the names. That. Uh, everything inside the mosque, you see these parts, are made of wood made of wood mm -hmm. and this uh, nimber they say that there is no uh, kneel stick in it only made of wood yeah only made of wood yeah it's more convenient when it's made of wool for example when it's made of wood a fire can destroy it when it's made of wool it's harder to be destroyed by the fire for example it may be destroyed by many other things and the outside wall, walls are walls. Everything inside this is wood. So in the upper floor, this is for ladies to take prayers, usually in the Islamic world. Uh, this floor is for uh, men, and the upper floor is for women. Although in, uh, during the Ramadan period, when it's the 27th night of the Ramadan, a very specific battle, uh, battle night, uh, this mask is used only for ladies to come and have a big prayer like Mavlut, all together praying. And men, they pray in another mask. I'll show you later on. If you have been to uh, Macedonia, have you ever been there? Yeah. In Tetovo, maybe? No. no. In Tetovo, there is very similar one mask colorful mm. but not uh, people say that it's not that beautiful as this one although uh, some uh, records say that probably Suleiman Pasha was the one who gave the money also for that but nobody knows exactly is it true Suleiman oh, yeah. wanted wanted this to be very colorful and very very uh, nice place for people that they want to come and see it so that these colors and the creations that they attract people to come even more to take prayers. Yeah, you're right. So. Because when I walked past, I went, "Wow, that's interesting." Please. Yes, yes. And everybody will uh, will stop to see it from the outside, at least, to take a photo. So it's the most frequently photographed uh, mosque in in Travnik. This one, the the no, the high spot and the place where this the first one the first one a long time ago in the 16th century 
Gazi Agas uh, Mosque was built, uh, this place, this area was called Bashcharshya, like in Sarajevo, but a very few people in Travnik know that. Today nobody knows that, because it's not called anymore like that. It was the center, this, because uh, we were at the fortress, and the street that we were going down, Varosh, the oldest one, somehow the houses were being built coming to this place. And then Osoye, the second oldest, and then Shumeche, the next one. That's how it expanded in Tramik.